Please welcome Morgan Birch, Lassay Lax, at the Weather Minerals, Landon Hendricks, Brayton Marshall, Sydney Carucci, Larry Andrews, Anissa Campbell, Kai France, Ariana McMasters, Tyler Brown, Robbie Harden, Jason Lucero, Kayla Dubina, Jane Thompson, Oscar Pallone, Catherine McGuinness, Alita Wright, Hunter Downs, and Richard Stutt. This is a tale set during the Civil War. It's called Righteous Rations. Our story opens on a frigid January day in 1864. Union and Confederate soldiers are fighting the brutal battle of Fair Garden in Tennessee. And we join three brothers, Frank, James, and Charles, as they plan their attack on the Confederate General Henry Smith. <coughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Why do we have to keep fighting battles in the winter time? Oh, come on, Charles. Are you really going to complain about the weather again? Yes, James. I am. Until the generals come to their senses and realize we should stop fighting in October and pick up again in March, I am going to keep complaining. we got enough to worry about between all the diseases and starvation. I heard that half the regiments in this area are almost completely out of food, and there won't be any more supplies arriving until springtime. These conditions aren't fit for a man, nor a beast. Think about how many men we lost this winter from a weather alarm. And think about how many more we'd lose if we didn't fight all winter and we're just sending ducks for those dirty rebels to sneak up and attack. James, Charles, keep your voices down. The general will be arriving any minute. So are we sticking to the original plan? Take out the general source and kill the soldiers? Wait, wait, wait. I thought you were just going to knock them out, right? Right. All right, it's time. James, give me the truth. Charles, I have behind that rock. I'll try to get those sent that to the soldiers are dead. Here he comes now. I recognize his voice. Now! Uh, uh, Frank, you got him. You got the general. Oh, he's really out cold. Did you accidentally kill him? No, uh, of course not. He's just in front of us. I don't know, Frank. Charles, you better kick him and make sure. <laughs> Charles, stop keeping the Confederate. Oh, come on, now, Frankie. Relax. He deserved it. Save that for later. Now, come on. We've got to bring him back to camp before nightfall. But look at him, Frank. He's 200 pounds of dead weight. How are you supposed to get him back there? How do you think? Put a second. Put a second. Come on, General. You're going back to camp like real VIP, being dragged by a leg like a potato sack. Two hours later at base camp. <gasps> we made it. How's General Smith looking? Ugh, oh, pretty dirty. We probably shouldn't have dragged for that like, cow pasture. Well, makes no difference now. We're here. And it's just about dinner time. <coughs> you two go ahead and get some food. I'll take the Confederate and get him locked up. He'll probably be coming too pretty soon. And we want to make sure he's contained. Thanks, Frank. We'll save you some soup. Thanks, Charles. I wonder what kind of soup Cook Richard will have tonight. He's always coming up with new recipes. I swear, Cook Richard is an angel sent to serve food straight from heaven. Our regiment always has food, even when others don't. I wonder where it comes from. Who cares? As long as I'm full, I don't care where it comes from. Good point. Let's eat! Meanwhile, in a jail cell on the other side of camp, Frank waits for General Smith to regain consciousness before joining the others at dinner. <coughs> There, all locked up. I must have really rattled him good. He's been out cold for hours. Maybe I can try to wake him up. Is there any water around here I can pour on his head? That might snap him out of it. No, no water anywhere. Just an old piece of crusty bread. Well, this will have to do. I'll just throw some pieces at his face until he comes around. <laughs> <laughs> What in the name of... Are you throwing bread at me? Well, you weren't waking up. What was I supposed to do? Oh, I don't know. Maybe treat me like a human and not a duck? Treat you like a human? That's pretty funny coming from you. What's that supposed to mean? You're a confederate. Only humans you care about are the ones who look like you. You better watch your mouth, boy. I know my rights. Confederates don't deserve rights. No, blacks don't deserve rights. They have nothing meaningful to contribute to society. 
Well, now you're here in my camp, and you'll never be able to contribute to society again. So you better start talking. About what? Where's your base camp? Where's the rest of your troops? What's your plan for attacking the Union? You think I'm dumb enough to answer your questions, boy? You're even stupider than you look. Fine. Have it your way. I'll try you again in the morning. I won't talk. You hear me? I won't talk. Just know that. And now, we pause this broadcast for a commercial break. Hey there, Civil War soldier. Are you losing in combat? At a loss for a weapon? Do you want to wipe out enemies in just a matter of seconds? Well, look no further than the brand new Gatling gun. Introducing the Gatling gun. Boy, this thing is rattling fun. On the battlefield, it'll kill anyone. Make your opponents retreat and run. Firing 300 rounds per minute at a rapid rate. We now rejoin our story already in progress. Frank, you made it. Pull up a seat. We got you a bowl of soup. Cook Richard really outdid himself this time. Come on, buddy, it's soup time. It's soup day. Day of the soup. All, All hail, hail the soup, soup god. god. Uh, what is that? What is what? There's a hair in my soup. A hair? Yes, and it kind of looks like Darla's. Darla? That nurse you had a liking for? That's the one. But she died last week, didn't she? I heard she got shot helping the soldier too close to the bathroom. It wouldn't be the first time someone found something strange in Cook Richard's soup. I found a big piece of it in my vegetable soup yesterday. And my French onion soup, how it looked like eyelashes floating around. <laughs> Wouldn't it taste so good? Who really cares? Okay, okay. Change of topic. What happened with General Smith, Frank? Did he ever wake up? Oh, he woke up all right. And I instantly wish he had stayed unconscious. He's a real jerk. Let me give you one bit of information. I kind of feel bad for him. If he doesn't talk, the officers will make his life pretty miserable. I don't feel bad for him. Why should I? He treats people just like cattle, just because of the color of their skin. If you ask me, he has it coming to him. James, he is still a human being, no matter how wrong his actions and mindset. The whole reason this war started in the first place is because we treat people as less than us because of their culture and color. If we keep acting in violent ways and put down our brothers and sisters in this world, it will be an endless cycle of violence and hate. Nobody, not even those who start the violence, deserve to be tortured. God said, love thy neighbor. We use the Bible to try to justify our actions, but we only use the parts that support what you're trying to do. Not the parts that say things that might contradict and condemn us. The Bible is filled with contradictions. It talks about love and hate, sacrifice and selfishness, hope and despair, equality and inequality. From my perspective, the Bible is just a long-winded way of saying that everybody is equal and deserves love and forgiveness. Then God and the brothers and sisters of the world. That was, wow. Charlie, are you okay? No, not really. Do you want to talk about it? No, I want to eat my soup. After all, it is soup day, day of the soup. All hail the soup god. Yeah, sure, Charlie. All hail the soup god. Right, Frankie? Sure. All hail the soup god. Later that night, after James and Frank and the rest of the soldiers were fast asleep, Charlie crept out of his tent and made his way to the jail cell where General Smith was being detained. Hello? Hello? Who's there? If you're here to make me talk, I won't. Do you hear me? I'll never talk. Be quiet, will ya? Light a candle. Show me, show me who's there. See? It's just me. Are you here to interrogate me more? Maybe a bit of torture? No, I'm not going to interrogate or torture you. I just... Just what, boy? I just wanted to see this war from your point of view. It's always good to know both sides of the story. Whoa, ain't that diplomatic of you? Where are you from, boy? New York. I've been nowhere. Oh, I got a real honest to goodness Yankee in my presence. Well, I'm guessing you had a pretty 
different childhood from mine. Boy, while I was growing up in Mississippi, my parents were broke. We almost were homeless until my father spent the last of his money on a sleep. We had a calling farm, but my dad had a bad dad and didn't have anybody to pay somebody to work regularly. That slave saved our lives. Seeing our farm was well known, and we had a couple hundred slaves. You see this gold wash tape part? I carry this with me at all times to remind me of how my family worked from dirt to gold, all with the help of slavery. I may not have a fancy gold wash chain, but my childhood wasn't all that different from yours, General Smith. My grandparents were poor too, but as soon as they had enough money, they paid the slaves and treated them like equals. Our farm still prospered. <coughs> you came in here and asked you for my reasons, and I told you, you won't change my mind about how slaves should be seen and treated, boy. You just won't. Now go on and get out of here. I'm tired, and I'm tired of talking to you. Leave me be, and don't get any fancy ideas about stealing this gold wash shade while I'm in this filthy jail cell. You hear me? It's mine, and it always will be. All right then, General. I'm leaving. <laughs> and now, it's time for a message from our sponsor. Mortals, are you hungry for a food that warms you up on a cold day? Do you crave a meal that you can eat with a spoon? Do you love eating things out of bread bowl? Do you think they come on down to soup God? All oh, yeah, soup God! Tomato bacon, beef barley, rocky cheddar, black bean, and both kinds of clam chowder. Soup God has every soup available to suit your soup craving needs. Soup God! Oh, All yeah, yeah, soup God! So come on down to Soup God and allow me to bless you with a quart of homemade soup and a pack of oyster crackers. Soup God! All hail Soup God! Soup God! And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Charlie! Charlie! Wake up! Huh? What is it? That's a battle bell? Frankie, what's going on? Yes. James, over here. Frank, Charlie, come on, you two. Get ready to go. James, what's happening? The general got a telegram from President Lincoln. We're marching into battle tonight. Frank, this seems big. Don't worry, Charlie. I think that will happen. Stay by us and you'll be okay. Now quick, grab your weapons and let's go. Several hours later, the battle is still reaching on when a cannonball bursts across Union lines. Me too. Well, look, over there, a soldier down with a bad language injury. He must have gotten caught in the blast. We gotta help him. No, Charlie, it's too dangerous. <coughs> Besides, he's going to die from that injury within a few minutes. He's losing too much blood. I know you're probably right, Frank, but I gotta try. Charlie, no! Ah, I've been hit. Charlie, what were you thinking? We need to get help. I, I just wanted to help. I, I needed to do something good so maybe God for, could forgive all the bad I've done. Don't talk like that, okay? You're gonna be fine. It's gonna be okay. Please, just stay with us. You both are the best brothers anyone could ever have. I promise that it's your time. I will be waiting for you. Have some soup for me, okay? I swear Miss Cook at your soup. Charlie! Charlie, please, no! He's gone, James. He's gone. Two weeks later. Oh, James. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. It's so late. Are you coming to bed? Yeah, in a minute. I just haven't been sleeping well since, well, since Charlie died. Have you had me look any more information out of General Smith? No. He's just as ornery as ever. And the strangest thing is that he seems to be... Seems to be what? Well, this will sound crazy, but he seems to be gaining a lot of weight. Really? Cook Richard is always delivering all these giant meals to General Smith's cell. It's just so strange, especially with the food choices everywhere else. Speaking of cook, I have to admit, all this talk of food is getting me hungry. Really? That's a good sign. But you haven't been eating hardly at all since we lost Charlie. I know. Too bad it's so long until breakfast. Nonsense. Come with me. Where are we going? To visit Cook Richard. He stays up every night prepping for food for the next day. I'm sure he's got something up to sleep for you. Come on, let's see what he's got. 
Wow, you weren't kidding about Cook staying up all night. He's got all the lentils in the kitchen, and the smells coming from there are wonderful. And look, he must have managed to get a cow from the farmer down the way. He's dragging in a big slab of meat to cut up in a butcher block right now. That sure is a lot of meat. What's he gonna do with that saw? Cut it all up to put in the soup, I guess. I sure hope he manages to get all the dough pieces out before he puts all that meat into the soup. I don't want to find any surprises again. He's dropping the meat into the big cauldron of broth now. Look, he seems to be trying to fish something out of the broth with his wooden spoon. Maybe he dropped another bone shard in there. Or a piece of hair. Looks like he found it. It's a it's a gold wash chain? What kind of cow wears a gold wash chain? Who's there? Who's out there? It's just us, though. I'm sorry to interrupt you. What are you doing here so late at night? James hasn't been himself since <laughs> Charlie died, Cook. But tonight he was finally feeling hungry again. So we decided to stop by to see if he had anything to give him. We can see that you're awfully busy making your soup for tomorrow. Yes. Yes, I am. I have to ask you, Cook. How do you manage to find all this meat for our soups every day? It's the middle of winter and regiments are starving. How are we so lucky? Well, James, I guess you could say I know what it takes to make it out of a harsh winter alive. We're doing a whole lot better than surviving, Cook. Look at all this meat. I don't think I've eaten this well my entire life. Well then, I'm doing my job. Now how about I get you boys both a nice bowl of soup and you can get on your way. Sounds good to me, Cook. Just make sure there's no gold watch chain in my soup, will you? Gold chain? We saw you fishing it out of the rocks a minute ago, but don't worry, your secret's safe with us. Uh, Cook Richard, what are all these clothes doing here in the corner? These are uniforms. Whose are they? Boys, I think you'd better get going. Frank, look! In that pile of clothes, that's Charlie's jacket. It has the same bullet hole and everything. What are you doing with this, Cook Richard? Well, I don't suppose there's any use in me keeping this a secret any longer. What do you mean, Cook Richard? Well, first of all, my name isn't Richard. It's Robert. Robert Brooks. That name sounds familiar. There's a reason for that. I'm one of the only surviving members of the Donner Party. The Donner Party? Yes, the Donner Party. I made it out of that horrible situation alive, and I swore I would always do my best to ensure that no one ever faced that kind of starvation again. When the war broke out, it seemed only natural to me, as a black man, that I would join up, with, join up to help the Union. And what better way to stay true to my cause than to feed the truth? But feed them what? You're both grown men. I think you can put two and two together here. We've been we've been eating people? Just the flesh, son. The spirits are gone and the people are no more. With so many casualties every day, it seems such a waste to let all those bodies rot when I knew I could keep hundreds of soldiers alive and healthy with the meat. I felt like it was my God given duty. But even Charles? Did you feed us our own brother? No, of course not. We were always very careful about that during the Donner expedition, making sure no one ate a loved one. I never served you boys anything from Charles, but, this bo but his body did go towards the greater good of feeding your fellow soldiers. I think he would have been happy to know his death was not in vain. You're a murderer. Far from it. I don't kill anyone, but I will admit to fighting of Gen General Smith. I saw that his health was declining, and I knew what a despicable man he was. Every time I delivered food to his cell, he would say such hateful things to him. Frank, I know you've heard the terrible opinions he's held about people of my race. I figured the least I could do was make sure that when he died, his body went on to feed the good men fighting for the equality of every citizen, no matter their skin color. I'm, I'm in shock, Cook. That's only natural, Frank. I understand, really I do. But I think in time you'll realize what I realized all those cruel winters ago when I was snowbound in the Sierra and starving in the Sierra Nevada. What's that? All spare in love and war and lunchtime. <laughs> Midnight Radio, and now a word from our sponsor.
Hey folks, it's Neil of Neil's Veal, here with a special offer for you. Do you love the taste of veal but not the hefty price tag? Well, come on down to Neil's Veal, where every cut of veal will cost you only pennies. Neil's Veal! How can we afford to do that? Don't ask. Where do we get our veal? <laughs> you don't want to know. Isn't it rumored that to properly cook human flesh, you have to cook it just like veal? Look, the less you think about it, the better. Just buy some stinking veal already. Neil's Veal! where the prices are low, the standards are lower, and the meat supply is highly questionable at best. Neil's Neil. Neil.